Welcome back to Pathologic. It's about 3.30 in the morning on day 12, the final day. So, the final decision about what is going to happen to this town is going to happen at a meeting at the cathedral here at 7 o'clock in the evening. So I need to be here at 7 o'clock to participate in the meeting. Before that happens, I want to speak with every single person to make sure I have not missed a single thing. If there's anything more to do, I want to do it. If there's anything more I need to know, I want to know it. And if there's anyone who's gotten sick on day 12, aside from Laura, who I've already cured, then I want to help them. Because I need to make sure everybody, all of the bound, and everybody on Clara's list of important people must be healthy. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure my ending is just not gonna be as good as it could be. So I'm gonna be super, super careful on this day. I'm gonna speak with, I think every single person. Yeah, I'm gonna go to literally every single location and speak with everybody. So I've already spoken with Lara, with Maria, Victor, and Georgie. So I've already gone to them and it's time to go to everybody else. Now of course going from place to place is going to be pretty tedious and not really interesting at all, so I'm gonna have lots of cuts around all the all the walking in between people. So, I'll see you in just a second. Young Vlad. It is easier to govern others than to prevent being governed. You saved my life. Thank you. I'll have a chance to put it to good use in the near future. It's odd to find you among those people. Maria told me from the very start to keep an eye on you, but I thought it was about scheming and hidden plots. Yeah, well, that was an unexpected turn of events, even for myself. It all happened very fast. The last few days, I mean. You were such a loyal son. I was sure you were to follow in your father's footsteps. I am still a loyal son. Who told you I was denying my family's values and power? That's like genes. One cannot change them. Even if I abjured the ideas my father believed in, I cannot abjure his lines. But that's step knowledge. Barak could tell you all about that. Your father. Do you want to be like him? He is a Bose, a bullman and a master of bulls. He is a man of primeval age, of the age that has long sunk into oblivion. He was born by the very damp and dense epic that gave birth to the kin and its values. I respect him, and I love him. You can see what he's done for me. But the age of Aroxes and Bisons have irretrievably ended. What are you going to do now? I'll serve Maria. I'll be her hands, her practical mind. I'll be her accountant and her chancellor. I'll estimate the price of her ideas and outbursts, and I'll estimate the price of her every dream. You know, it happens. Some business-like people are also surprisingly mad. Yes, I know. You know, I noticed going around town from here to here that I didn't see any signs of the plague. Is the plague still in parts of the town? Because it doesn't seem like I can buy a map from him. If we're in the majority, the fragile polyhedron will be left untouched. No, I can't buy a map. Well, it looks like there's finally, I think for the first time ever, something to say to Murky. The young woman who's in the, the train on the very outskirts of town. If you didn't take care of me, who would breathe life into our town again? I will have so many things to do in five or ten years. Thank you. Thank you. What is she referring to exactly? How have I taken care of her? You think this town is still able to take a new lease of life? Definitely. It won't be easy, of course. But life has to be fought for. 
otherwise it's not real. Do not tear off the umbilical cord that has been feeding all of us since the beginning of time. These things are already going extinct almost everywhere. What, what umbilical cord is she talking about? The polyhedron? Is it really worth the effort to do your best for the sake of such a wretched place? And what about my friends? I won't be able to do anything without them. Are they alive? Is it possible to visit them already? Not yet. I'm not done yet. That's a strange conversation. It almost seems like that's a conversation topic that only should have showed up if I was playing as a different character. Someone is circling the place at night. Because I never had any quests or, or anything, any sort of actions involving her in this entire playthrough. So the fact that she's actually, you know, a named character in a location that's marked red on the map means that I'm guessing one of the other two characters, either Clara or the Herespex, you know, if you play as those characters, they must, uh, their paths must intertwine with hers. And I feel like I just got a bit of their dialogue for her. Because she's speaking as if we've known each other and I've been helping her, but I haven't done anything for her directly. This seems to be the exact same dialogue as Murky? Yeah. That's so strange. It's literally the exact same dialogue as Murky. Thank you. I need to live a little longer. There's one more thing that has to be done. My death will not be purposeless now. What kind of thing? I am to perform the most precious feat of all. The feat of self-sacrifice. I will do what Simon has done. Hold on a second, this is also the exact same dialogue as... Uh... I think Georgie or Vincent. One of those two. This is... odd. That is so strange. That's two characters now that have had copy and pasted dialogue. I mean, either... Either that's just... Either that's just very... bad... writing? Like, they just kind of got, you know, just like copy and pasted the dialogue? Or is that supposed to tell me something? The fact that people are saying the exact same thing, is that supposed to... Am I supposed to read into that? And Ruben also says the same thing? What kind of thing? Yeah. Everyone is talking about the feat of self-sacrifice. Perhaps... Hmm, what do they have in common? Ruben and that guy... You know what, I think everybody who is saying the exact same thing, that what they're going to do is um, sacrifice themselves for Simon, I think that's everybody that's on... Is it the list of bound? The list of adherents? No, it's not the people on the list of adherents. It's the people on the list that Clara gave me. When was that? Changeling's Choice? Uh, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, on the list is Bad Grief the Thief. Yep. Um, Yulia, Anna, and Ruben, yeah. So everybody who's having the exact same bit of dialogue are people that are on the list that Clara gave me, the people that need to be alive to perform the miracle. And those people are not the same people as my adherents. At least not entirely. Well, I guess that means if I'm going to visit someone else with, who's on the list, then there's no point, I suppose. They'll just say the same thing. I'm still going to visit them anyway, though, just in case. Well, sure. I also thank you for saving my life, kind sir. Hats off to you. I'll have a chance to put my life to good use in the near future. That's what they all say, right? Ha! <laughs> so, it was not copy and pasting and or lazy writing or anything like that. Of course. If it was any other game, I would suspect it was simply that, but with this game, no. 
It's never that. <laughs> you know too much, Mark Immortel. Hmm. I still don't get it. You are an entirely different creature. How come you're in the same boat with the Utopians? What is there not to get? O oh, esteemed and wisest of bachelors. Hmm. I thought that the whole point of the Utopian's ideology was neglecting the law, the laws of fate, and the limits it imposes upon us. You are correct. Oh, the keenest of the astute? So what? I have cognized this side of existence from backstage, so to speak. From where the strings go, and the machinery is hidden. And yet I willingly swore allegiance to the Utopia. Does that tell you nothing? Wait, that's a... I want to read that again. I have cognized... Is that even a word? Cognized this side of existence from backstage so to speak. I, I don't know what that means exactly. From where the strings go and the machinery is hidden. So he's saying he comes from a place where he's able to see the threads of fate, the machinery behind the play, the strings behind the puppets. He comes from there. Wait, when we're talking about strings and machinery, what are we talking about? We're talking about fate, right? So he comes from somewhere, or from a, a mindset at least, where he doesn't believe fate. He doesn't believe in fate. He doesn't believe that the future is decided, or that he has... Or, or that there's nothing he can do about it. He believes it can still change, I guess? Or at least he's able to see fate or something like that? And he's saying... I willingly swore allegiance to the Utopia. So he's giving in to fate, I think? It doesn't tell me enough. You are, as always, a double dealer. Pfft. You know, I'm glad you're leaving. You're a dangerous person. Dealing with you would be an arduous task. Hmm. You're back to being annoyed already. And I was just planning to ask as to what you're going to do with your life. Me? <laughs> That's ridiculous. And it's very tactless of you to ask me a question like that. Oh no, no offense taken. By me. You haven't offended me, after all. You've offended the Scarlet Mistress herself. My life belongs to Maria now. And I'm merely her humble servant. Always at her service. Huh. You really have given yourself over to the Utopia, to Nina. Do I want to call him the Devil? Or her the Devil? If every person can be thought of as a, just a, um, a manifestation of Nina? I don't really like either of these options. Let's go with this one. You know, I've just realized why you haven't been infected even once. You've never been among my volunteers. I have no idea what that means, by the way. Volunteers for what? If we're in the majority, the fragile polyhedron will be left untouched. We'll manage to sustain life in it. Maria can do miracles. Yeah, I'm getting more and more certain that I don't... Oh my god, look at that creepy smile. I'm getting more and more certain that I really do not want Maria and Nina to be successful. Creepy. Just creepy. Not to mention, if they take over the polyhedron, I'm pretty sure that means the children are left for dead. I think I'm going to side with the children on this one. 
but uh, we'll see what my decision actually comes down to. Let me do this conversation a different way and see if I can get something different. Okay, what if I say this instead of the first one? I don't believe you've changed, and you being with them is fearsome to me. You are an alarming tone in the jubilant orchestra of creators. No, well, he says the same thing. Hello, Alexander. Surely you have something to say. What? So, today is the end. At 2200, we're taking the army southeast to the main road. At 2350, we're firing. Your choice will decide where the shells go, surgeon. The council will be held at the cathedral at 1900. So, ten minutes before midnight, they're firing. What if you miss the target? Not from this distance. That is out of the question. Then wait for me at the cathedral. Take my advice. Beware of the Inquisitor. They do say you're a refined analyst, but I wouldn't risk playing her game if I were you. It's better to hold a blind defense and not to believe a word. I'll keep that in mind. You saved my life, Daniel. Thank you. I'll put it to good use. You won't regret it. What are you going to do with your life? Tell me. Here's what's going to happen. The part of the town on this bank of the river will be deserted. The people who will have found shelter in the specular cocoon will become its new inhabitants. What are you going to build? My brother and I will build the whole town. The cold hall will look like a mud pie in a sandbox compared to it. I've designed it in my mind already. Really? Tell me. I told you already of the idea to construct a building with variable density. Or was it someone else? But there's also a not house. There's a house that erupts from itself. An inside-out house, so to speak. But without the inside part. An encircled suburb that is at war with the center. A bridge suburb. And, of course, a growing house that changes every week. How could you possibly invent all that? Are you really going to build all those things? That was an effulgent epiphany, a true eureka moment. My brother and I have planned the space already. We have laid roads, placed suburbs and districts, and when we saw the whole thing and realized how much energy was hiding in it, you know, we exchanged glances. It will rival the cities of the greatest ancient civilizations. That town of yours will exist only on paper. Like with the polyhedron, it will turn into a full-size model of itself, made of its own designs. You're wrong, but why should I prove anything to you? Time will tell. All right. I hope you will stop sinking in the green whirlpool. The herb is pulling you to the bottom already. There is neither warmth nor light there. Today is the final choice. You have less than 14 hours to make the right choice. Old oh boy. In which it finally becomes apparent what it was all about. I've received a letter from the Haruspex. The Haruspex's proposal. I was told you were looking for an alternative way, Oinen. I know what we must do. We have no other choice but to offer an inordinate sacrifice. Doing so is still the most humane thing that can be done. If you think you could trust my judgment, come see me, and I will tell you the details of it. I am running out of time. So much has happened recently that I feel as if I'm being torn in two. Help me. Barak. Okay, so I'm assuming he's probably going to be at the machine or maybe the jail cell around here? The butchering room? I think that's where I last saw him. One of these two places. Um, either way, I've got a few people left to see before I go to him. I've got these two people, the pub, Anna, Hospity, and Grace. And then I'll be all done. 
except for Barack. And by the way, I've been skipping over some people like uh, Sticky, Yulia, the um, the Sabarovs, and the reason for that is because they had nothing of any interest to say. Just they just had the same, you know, the same thing about I'm sacrificing myself for Simon. Or Capella had the same thing that all the other children said. So nothing of interest, and don't worry, you've missed nothing. Ooh. Another letter. A letter from the powers that be. Bachelor, we thought we should write, because you don't seem to be listening to what we tell you. You've gotten out of hand. As of late, you keep doing whatever you please. This is unacceptable. You are spoiling the game. If this letter reaches you in good time, do come to the Polyhedron. They will let you inside. Keep your eyes tightly closed. Descend to the bottom and say, Three, four, five. Open your eyes. We'd like to have a little chat with you. The people who own you. Jesus. Oh my god. You keep doing whatever you please, I'm spoiling the game. It's getting quite literal at this point, isn't it? They're not even calling it a play. They're calling it a game. I think that's pretty much the last place I'll go. Let's see if Anna has anything to say. If there's enough people like me, the town will stay the same. We'll surrender ourselves to Clara unregretted. Nope. Nothing of interest. You saved my life, old chap. Lovely. Soon you'll see that I won't let you down. Your gift is greatly appreciated and is going to be put to good use. What are you going to do with your life? Tell me. I finally realized what my part is, you know. I'm good at breaking through to where no one is supposed to. And I'm really good at breaking rules, at challenging and contradicting. But I have no idea how to build something. You are not alone, Andre. Exactly. There is no Andre. Only the brother Stamaton. The twins. We are worthless without one another. And together we are worth more than any of the old school masters. For Peter's fantasies have no limits. He's too naive for that. And I have the genuine freedom of action. You don't conform to anything. And this is exactly why I'll be able to implement anything invented by Peter and blessed by Maria's love. Neither death nor depth nor the law itself will stop me. All in all, I'm staying. I love this future pyre. It makes me feel like a demiurge. What is a Demiurge? I have no idea. I envy you, Andre. Yet another letter. They're pouring in today. The Changeling's request. Do you remember the letter I sent you? The time has come. The victory I am trying to lead you to is not enabled by reason. It is made possible by faith alone. You cannot prove it. You only can feel it deep within your heart. I am in the left wing of the termitary, so come along if you want to talk. My plan is the only one that will work. Nothing has to die. Clara. Oh boy. Are these exclusionary? It sounds like the Ruspex has his own idea of what to do, and Maria obviously has her own idea of what to do, and it sounds like the Changeling has yet another idea. Well, I'm gonna have to hear them all out. Ah, so it seems Clara is here, through the door that I was never able to open. Where the termitary is. Before I speak with you, what exactly is back here?
Oh my god, how high up does this go? Jesus. Can I just say how creepy I find it to go up countless flights of stairs, down an empty hallway, just to find boards blocking my way into yet another empty room? Yet another letter. Read that once I get downstairs. Inquisitor's Reminder. Tonight at 7, proceedings will be held at the Town Cathedral. I earnestly request your attendance. You will introduce your argument before this obtuse commander in order to substantiate your, our, I should hope, decision. I also ask you to put all your current affairs in order before the proceedings. The situation is at a stalemate. Whatever authority I wield is not enough to guarantee that the right decision is enforced. P.S. I rely upon your discretion, as well as your decency. I do not trust the Inquisitor in the slightest. It's so cold. See how everything turns out? Who could have thought? You have to sacrifice something, either the town or the polyhedron. One of the queens wants to destroy the wondrous tower, while the other seeks to raise as much as possible just to make sure. So the queen, so the queen that wants to destroy the wondrous tower would be Aglaia, right? Well, no. The other seeks to raise as much as possible just to make sure. I think that's Aglaia. The one who wants to raise as much as possible? I think the queen who wants to destroy the wondrous tower as it is is Maria. Who wants to take it over and kick the children out. Anyway, do you have a different solution? If my confidants are alive, I will come to the council with you. And there won't be a single queen there that I won't be able to convince to my cause. But are you absolutely sure they are alive? Do you really want me to come to the council? Yes, I am sure all your bound are well. Come to the cathedral. I'll give you the right to decide. Wait. Should I say that? Before I've heard everybody else out? Am I committing to this decision before I've heard the Haruspex out? But she's promising that we can end this without any death. The Haruspex says there will have to be a sacrifice. Which means there would be death. That makes me want to go with her. But then again, I haven't heard what the Haruspex... What his plan is. Hmm. I'm gonna say yes. And if I hear something from the Haruspex that makes me change my mind, I could always reload my save. Uh, what's happened? Is it the quest updating? Yes. Clara will come to the cathedral. If I will let her make the ultimate decision, she will force the commander to withdraw his troops and the current situation will remain unchanged. Yet, might a refusal to interfere be seen as a decision in itself? In this case, the town will remain a machine of death no matter how pretty. Hmm. So it sounds like she's not going to do anything about the plague. She's just going to convince everybody to basically do nothing?
Is the plague still a problem, though? I mean, I'm almost certain it is, but the thing is, I've gone around almost the entire town and I haven't seen any traces of the plague. Nowhere. Okay, I've spoken with Aspity and Grace. Neither of them had anything interesting to say. So it's time to talk with Barak, who is indeed right about where he was jailed before. I think I have a fever. Or maybe not. I hope you're happier than I am, Oinan. So you've mustered up the resolve to... What about you? I apologize for the loud bird outside. It seems to want to really be part of the recording. I'm in doubt, Oinan. All this time I've been walking between two paths. I hoped that eventually they will converge into one, but they went into different directions. I know how to preserve the town without risks. I could have shown you the proof I promised. I was a bit short on time. Then tell me how you would do this. I would destroy the polyhedron. This is the price that has to be paid for procuring enough raw material to create tons of panacea. I would keep the settlement, of course. An abandoned dangerous place is a hundredfold worse than an inhabited one that's ruled with resolve. Wait, so he would destroy the polyhedron and somehow that would give him enough raw material to create plenty of panacea. So you would demolish the polyhedron. That's your price for saving the town. But how would this powder cake of a settlement be ruled? I would tackle the hardest task myself. Ruling the dome that's covering the depths. The living part that has a protective crust, I'd pass over to the new generation of rulers brought up by Capella. If another outbreak ever happens, we'll have enough panacea to nip the epidemic in the bud. Huh. So, he would be... The ever-watchful guard. Always on the lookout for the epidemic. The next generation of rulers. You mean your bound children? Yes, exactly. Olgimskaya has marked them, and her mark is not of this world. She is never wrong. Say, if you took it upon yourself to take care of them, I'd have the time to prepare my arguments before evening, and could attend the council well prepared. But the changeling has ruined them, and now some of them are dying. Wait, some of them are dying, what? You mean, with the plague? I've been everywhere, and as far as I can tell, nobody is sick. Uh, I suppose I could help them. Really? Then I could present the commander with arguments in favor of a proposal that will preserve the town at the cost of destroying the tower. This is a wise arrangement. And, as my heart tells me, a lasting one. I'm thinking about the future of my community. What do you need for that? My confidants are alive, so I'll come. I see no problem with that. But are you absolutely sure they are really alive? What if the Haruspects and the Changeling both come? Is that going to be a problem? Let's see. <laughs> I am. Your confidants are alive and well. I'll see you at the council, Barak. So what has that done now? Barak will come to the cathedral. If I will allow him to pass the ultimate judgment, he will destroy the polyhedron so that the town may survive at a cost of its uncommonness. Or at the cost of its uncommonness. Once again, the town will become the same backwater hole it was before. The Hippocratic Oath enjoins us to preserve the life of a genius by means of curative lobotomy. Vigorous applause. <laughs> okay, so everything special about this place will be dead. Hmm. So this is, I guess, kind of 
Riley or something, saying that to protect the most people, it is our duty to cut out parts of the brain. That's the curative lobotomy, destroying the polyhedron. Well, if I'm trying to do the least harm, then it seems like going with Clara's approach would probably be the best. Although it does say, for Clara's approach, the town will remain a machine of death. So, I don't know. Well, now I've spoken with everybody, so where does that leave me? I've heard the Haruspec's proposal, I've heard the Changeling's request. Ah. Right. The powers that be waiting for me at the base of the polyhedron on the inside. Keep your eyes tightly closed. Descend to the bottom and say three, four, five. This goes down. Okay. The powers that be. As it said. Whoa. No! Stop teleporting me. As it said, keep your eyes closed and descend to the bottom. Unfortunately, I can't really close my eyes. Well, here. I'll try to do it. I'll just face down. Keep your eyes closed. Descend to the bottom and say three, four, five. Do I need to go to this thing? Or do I speak with one of you? I think I need to go on that thing. Yeah, can't talk with any of them. Oh. Are these the powers that be? Children playing with a... What is that, sand? Is the whole town just a children's play thing? There's the polyhedron. Wait. I'm a child. I just realized. Look at how high I am. I'm, I'm actually shorter than her and she's a little girl. Teensy. Don't be upset. Being a toy is also nice. Why did you play it like this? Why couldn't you have chosen a different game? Like tag or something, huh? Because we've been to a funeral. They've been sending us out to the garden for ten days in a row so that we wouldn't get in anyone's way. They've been taking us to the cemetery for a week now, Bachelor. And if you keep being naughty, 
I'll take you with me next time and leave among the wreaths so that you know better. But why did you need dolls? Couldn't you have played without us? Well, we did need to find some use for you. We never liked you all that much anyway. You've always been the scary doll. Playing with you is no fun. So you stuck the throwaways into the thick of it. The ones that could fix things. You can't always have a smart doctor man at hand. That's just how the game goes. Will you help us heal the town? I... I can make her do something. Well, I can ask her to do something. <laughs> I'm a children's plaything. I'm... part of a game from two children who are... stricken with grief, I think? Or at least around death, all the time. Hmm. What in the hell do I do? I don't know. I feel like, almost like destroying it just to spite them, for putting us through this just as part of their game. But even though we might be part of the game, we seem to still be alive. So I wouldn't just be hurting myself, I'd be hurting everybody else. Everybody else in this false world that Teensy and the other person made. Should I ask you to get rid of the Commander or the Inquisitor? I don't trust the Inquisitor. No. I'm just gonna say, I'll heal it for my own sake, not for yours. Indeed, it was a sandbox plague. The children who were playing there must have been on their way home from the funeral. A sorrowful game may have seemed an appropriate diversion to them, or maybe they simply felt their childhood was slipping away. One way or another, the hero, the hero has been bitterly deceived. All this time, the hero took himself to be a living man who was trying to rescue his fellow human beings. Beyond doubt, this belief has filled him with fervor, helped him to reach the finale, and even be somewhat triumphant. In vain. It was all in vain. The hero was but a puppet, striving to help the imaginary population of a town that was nothing more than a drawing. Strangely, there is still not a word to be heard from the powers that be. Perhaps they became bored of it all, or were called back home for supper. Hey look, it's Bachelor! Wow, he's so big. How did you find us? They've already told you, right? So the powers that be are you. I want you to tell me everything. No problem. What do you want to know? Show me your sandbox. Look! It's a magic sandbox. See how it reflects in the mirrors? It's because everything's for real there. Here's a town. We've made it out of sand. And there's this awful thing going on there. An epidemic. So it's all crumbling. The town is falling apart. But we've sent heroes there to fix it. So how did you go about sending the heroes? It's rotting, see? Ew. We hope they think of something. Muir it in sand, at least. They're magical too, you know. The heroes are. 
Take you, for example. Look how it all worked out. You used to be a doll, and now you're alive. Perhaps the rest also work like this? Did you know that your dolls were alive? Everything is alive around here. It's this structure. It brings things to life. It's not like we're twisting anyone's arm. It just happens, all on its own. We only built the town, and then it became miraculous all on its own. In the dolls, we just stuck the throwaway ones in. They were lame anyway. Oops, sorry. Don't you touch anything else around here and don't stick anything there anymore. Jesus, stop. <laughs> stop messing with the town. <sighs> I've got like chills now. Everything was a play, everything was a game. I mean, I kind of knew that on some level, but... Uh, I've come alive? <laughs> Literally? Figuratively? I... Uh, there's so many layers to this game. I'm afraid you'll never understand it. See, doll? It was us. We've arranged all this. It turned out to be great. We've never made a world like this before. It's magical. We planted it, and here's what has grown up. But now there's rot everywhere. I am a human being. In that case, you're a human being that closely resembles one of our toys. It's a, it's a bachelor, but we're calling it Daniil Denkovsky. For fun. It can't be. I'm not your toy. Really? So you're not a doll? Go ahead. Hit me, then. Well, why are you just standing there? I dare you. Hit me with everything you have. <sighs> what shall I do now? Stop moaning, get up, and help us fix the town. You were doing well. Just a little bit left till the game is over. It's time for us to go home anyway. I don't believe you. You're not real. You said try to hit me, I dare you. Okay. I guess I'm really not real. letter from the makers. Please do come by to meet us at the theater if you have a spare minute. We'd like to have a rather inconsequential but mature talk with you. We apologize in advance for the inconvenience. The people who executed the whole thing. Let's go meet the makers. Who I take it are different from the powers that be. And why are you standing outside? You Talon? Come in. They're waiting for you. Take my coat and my bag.
The hero is a doll, but so are the children. The real game is what's happening between you and us. I cannot leave Bachelor's body. You are imposing your limits upon my upon me. A bachelor has lost his battle for freedom since the very day he was born. What about you? I wanted to stop the epidemic. Even a make-believe one. But did you understand what the epidemic really was? It was truly rather obvious. I don't think I do. Wait a minute. At the beginning of the game... I feel like at the beginning of this game we saw children that were like holding a funeral around a sandbox. I don't know if it actually showed any of this, but I feel like they were burying a, a pet or something. And the children said that everything's rotting in the sandbox. Everything's turning to rot. And it's gross. Is the plague like a pet? that has died in the sandbox and was buried in there? Is it like one of their family pets or something? I, I don't know. Just a feeling I have. I, I want to go back like right now and look at the introduction cutscene for this game. But I can't, so I'm going to have to go off my memory of the beginning cutscene just like I saw it like five months ago or something. So it's pretty fuzzy. Anyway. I now know that it was all a children's game in a glass sandbox, but what for? Was the disease the true evil, though? The disease is only a method. The weapon of evil, just like a scalpel in Bachelor's hands. The disease will go, devouring itself. Then there will be war, famine, heresy. Was it really worth all the effort? Look around. What do you mean? I don't understand. The disease is only a method. It's the weapon of evil. What? What does evil have to do with this, though? All this for a single wretched town? No. It was the town that had been built for you, not the other way around. We apologize if it's been a disappointment. I still don't get it. It had been built so that you could make your final choice now. We are observing you. Everyone who makes it to midnight will have made a choice, one way or another. We want to see what yours looks like. You still have a chance to change your mind. I... How can I even live after this? Even after I deal with the town, how can I live the rest of my life? Do I even still exist after the decision? Or am I going to make the decision, the children are going to see the end, and then they're going to get called to supper and just leave the town there, or crush the town and wipe the slate clean again. Is that what Peter Stamaton meant about all the fascinating designs that he has planned in his head? The new town? Is the new town the new game that the children are going to play in the sandbox? I've kind of got bigger problems to deal with than just the plague in this town, so you know what? I don't care about that.
You see how sad our fortune is. We put all our hopes in you. We poor actors were hoping you'd become a director of a new show. The old one has been beaten to death. But you turned out to be a doll. <laughs> but I'm not a doll. Did I hear you right? Who is it speaking? Hmm. Good question. Am I speaking as myself or the bachelor? I'm speaking as the bachelor who's having an existential crisis. It's me, the bachelor. Nothing? You have nothing more to say? Kind sir, can I help you with something? Tell me, who are you in this puppet world? We do not belong to the puppet shows. We are the actors of a mime performance. I, for example, am a miserable actor. My line of character is always moaning the inevitable losses. Our repertoire is quite limited, really. The esteemed impresario may have oversold the importance of the local theater. Stop messing with me. Are you a child? I am exactly what you think I am. A collection of poorly rendered polygons on a screen. <laughs> oh god. Why are you giving me that look? Do not ascribe a more important role to me than the one I have been assigned from the very beginning. I'll fail a bigger role. The mask isn't expressive enough. Talk about breaking the fourth wall. Take care, you little scribble. Hmm. All the other lines of dialogue are gone now. No do-overs on that one. That's it? <laughs> well, their letter was very true. We'd like to have a rather inconsequential but mature talk with you. That's very true. That was mature and fascinating, but also inconsequential. That doesn't really change anything, does it? Fine, then. I guess it's time we end this and see what happens next. Can't talk with that one. Is it just me, or does it seem unnaturally clear? This game normally feels like it's in such a haze. Like the Twirine haze, and I still see some of that if I look forwards, but I don't know, it seems clearer than before? Maybe I'm just imagining things, I don't know. I don't remember looking up and seeing blue sky. But maybe it was there all along. Okay. Well, the final decision is going to start happening at 7 o'clock at night. Which is in not too long from now. It's about 2 p.m., so I've got about 5 hours until then. Let's go sleep. Sleep until our time comes. And I'm gonna sleep in little bursts of time so that if I get a letter, I have time to read it before the meeting. I think I'm gonna sleep in Maria's place. You have nothing new to say to me, right? I think I'm having fever heat. Nope. Okay, let's sleep one hour at a time.
No new letter? Wait, what time is it? It is... subtract 12 from that, it's 7... No, no, it's... okay, yeah, just about to be 7. Want to make sure I didn't oversleep. Hey, yeah, it was different. Now it's back to being hazy. But for a short while, for a short while it was clear. That has to mean something, right? Here we go. Come, Bachelor. The Assembly is waiting your decision. The queens of this chessboard are in a deadlock. They have each other pinned down. The game may very well end in a tragic stalemate. You are a pawn at the finishing line. Deliver your checkmate, mate. Do I hear laughter from under your ugly beak? Funny. Now everything will be decided. The Inquisitor, Lass, seems to think she has used you. Confused? Don't you fret. She's also nothing. Everything was leading to this. You are now acting in the interest of inevitability. You can't get away from it. Evil conquers all. Make way.